Hi, John Sarton with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Back to show you the L160. This is a four torch hydrogen torch unit. I'm gonna go over setup and a little bit about use. Okay, so the kit comes with the machine itself. It comes with booster tank. It comes with 10 meters of hose. Uh, you can actually customize the length of your of the hose. So say if you have four benches that you need to run a torch to each bench, this will allow you to customize the length that you need. It comes with a plastic funnel, two T fittings, four torch handles. These are the regulated torch handles and I'll tell you uh, what I mean by the uh, them being regulated further on in this video. It's also going to come with a total of 12 tips, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0.8 millimeter tips. It'll have a user's manual and it'll actually have a USB with some more information on it. Additionally, you'll need to purchase uh, some consumables. So the consumables for this machine are methyl alcohol, you need to use methyl alcohol, uh, denatured alcohol, rubbing alcohol is not a replacement for methyl alcohol. Uh, it is required that you use methyl alcohol with this system. The flux solution. Flux solution, you're going to mix with the methyl alcohol, 15 to 20 grams of flux solution to the one quarter methyl alcohol. You need your electrolyte compound. This is potassium hydroxide. It's uh, 1,080 grams which is the exact amount that you need for the four torch unit. You'll also need 2,600 milliliters of water. So you're going to mix the uh, 1,080 grams of electrolyte compound to 2,600 milliliters of water. The container that you mix this up in needs to be a container that is going to withstand the temperatures of boiling water. There is an exothermic reaction that happens whenever you mix the electrolyte solution. It gets very hot. Um, the solution can e actually even boil. You might hear a boiling noise from it, um, and it does get very hot. So make sure that the container that you're using is something that will withstand that. Additionally, you're going to need a, like a stainless steel spoon, long stainless steel spoon, or a glass rod to mix the solution. You need to follow all safety precautions found in the SDS sheets of these items, and those SDS sheets are actually attached to uh, the item's web page. Um, if you need further information on that, you can always give the tech team a call. Another thing that you want to have on hand is you want to have vinegar on hand. Um, vinegar is actually a neutralizer to the the caustic solution, the potassium hydroxide. So if you do spill it, you can use vinegar to clean it up. If you get it on your hands, so on and so forth, use vinegar to actually neutralize the solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up off camera. Um, it's gonna take probably an hour for the solution to come down to a, a point that it's cool enough to actually uh, put into the machine. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh, I've uh, mixed up the solution, I've been letting it cool, and uh, I've actually just went ahead and started uh, attaching my hoses. I've cut the hoses to my lengths that I wanted. Um, attaching the hoses is really easy. It comes with a, uh, a little, uh, like a little collet. Um, you put that on the hose. You shove the hose over the barbed fitting on the bottom of the torch, and then you go ahead and screw that tight. Attaching it to the machine is the same thing. Um, it, has, uh, it has the same type of nut and you attach it to the machine in the same manner. Okay, so now um, after we've got that taken care of, we're going to put the electrolyte into the machine. The electrolyte solution is uh, cooled down. It's come to almost room temperature. You'd never wanna put the electrolyte hot electrolyte solution directly into the machine. The, the way you're gonna do this is, the first thing you're gonna do um, is you're gonna turn the machine on. Actually, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna plug the machine in. 
then you're going to turn the machine on. There are uh, two positions on this rocker switch. There's the upward position, which is actually the on position, and there's the down position, which is the fill position. It has this little icon there. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to make sure that my power knob is all the way down. You're going to notice that these lights come on. So uh, this is the way that you're going to tell how much fluid is inside of your machine. And it's also going to tell you when you need to uh, add extra um, distilled water to the electrolyte. The electrolyte solution, the 1080 grams, is the total amount that you're going to need for an entire year of running runtime on the unit. You will not replace electrolyte solution except uh, every year. So the only thing that you're going to top it off with is going to be distilled water. So to do that, we've got it into the fill position. We're going to go up to the safety cap. I'm going to remove the safety cap. And we're going to put our funnel in there. And then I am going to start to fill the machine. This is where you need to really start paying attention to your lights. You're going to see that your, the lights are going to start to change from green. And then the red light starts to flicker. And as soon as the red light comes on steady, you need to stop pouring your solution. It's going to take pretty much all of the 2600 milliliters of solution for this machine. So that is the, uh, the process that you follow. Turn it on into the fill position. Then start filling the machine. Watch the lights. As soon as the red light turns red and solid, stop filling the machine. The next thing we need to do is fill the flux tank or the booster tank. I've already mixed 15 grams of boric acid to the methyl alcohol and I'm going to go ahead and put it into my tank. Now one thing you don't want to do is get the solution down into this center cavity. So you can just put your finger over the top of it and start to fill up the tank. Now on the side of the tank, you're going to see a minimum and a maximum. Right here, there's two lines, there's minimum and maximum. You want your flux solution to be in between these two lines. So don't overfill it. And you're really just going to be looking by eye and making sure that you don't go over that line. Once you've got that filled, you can go ahead and install it onto the machine. Here's the stem that you're going to screw your tank onto. Okay. Now you want to tighten this up, but you don't want to over tighten it. There are gaskets in there and if you crush the gaskets, you'll need to replace them. Um, so tighten it up until it's snug and then leave it at just leave it so dog don't over tighten same thing with the safety cap I'm going to go ahead and put the safety cap on the machine just until it's tight and now you are ready to start the machine okay so we've got the electrolyte solution in the machine we've got our torches hooked up so now the only thing, we've got our, our flux tank hooked up. Um, so now the only thing that we need to do is, is light our torches. So we're going to put the switch into the run position, which is straight up. You're going to hear the fan kick on. Whenever you start it up, always remember to have the power control down into zero. Um, you want it to go ahead and run for about uh, oh, five minutes. Um, and uh, before it's going to actually start to generate uh, a, a really good flow. 
Um, so whenever you first start it up, make sure it's in zero. Then go ahead and you can kind of turn it up to, uh, to five or six, just so that there is actually uh, a, not, a, not a restriction. Um, so we're going to uh, let the machine run for just a few minutes and then we will start the, uh, the torch up. To begin with, you really need to kind of tune this to the tips that you're using. Now, it depends on how many of the torches you have open at one time. Uh, you, can, you see here that uh, you can shut off two of the torches completely. One line is going to, uh, to have uh, production of, of hydrogen through it all the time. Um, but you can also shut off your torches here. Uh, remember I mentioned that this is a regulated torch. Um, so you really want to always allow a flow of, of hydrogen to go through the system. If you shut off all four torches, um, they're all sealed and there's no flow, then you're going to get back pressure into the machine and the machine is going to shut off. Um, so you're always going to want to keep one torch open just, uh, just for that. So let's go ahead and let's start up a torch. I went ahead and I put a, um, a tip on the torch. This is the 0.7 millimeter tip. Um, and I've got a really good flow. I can actually feel a really good flow of hydrogen um, coming out on my hand. So I'm going to go ahead and light it. Now you see, it's, it takes a little bit of time to light. Um, you can always turn the torch back a little bit to reduce the flow and it'll light easier. Um, but, uh, but there you go, the torch is lit now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the valve a little bit more here. This seems like this is uh, about as open as you want for this particular tip. But I can also cut this back. So if you're working with a little bit finer work, I can actually cut this back a little bit and work with a really small flame. So it's very adjustable on these, on these torch handles. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up this other torch. We're going to put a 0.6 on this one. There's the 0.6. And let's go ahead and I'm going to open up this valve. it up. I've got good flow throughout that. I'm going to light that up and I'm going to open that up to its max. So you can see we've got 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0.8 millimeter flames. So one thing you need to remember is you're going to be drawing uh, you're going to be drawing the production of hydrogen with every torch that you light. So you need to make sure that you adjust your power settings correctly. So you can see that we are producing, I've got this set really at max because all four torches are open um, or they will be open. If you, if you have it set too low, what can actually happen is uh, you can create a flashback. Um, so you need to make sure that whenever you are running all four torches that you have it producing the max amount of fuel uh, that it can produce. Okay, so we've got actually all four torches going now. Um, and now I need to show you how to shut these torches down. Remember I mentioned about a flashback. Um, something that uh, can actually cause a flashback is, uh, is actually if you shut the machine off without shutting the torches off first, or the flames off first. Uh, a flashback is whenever the flame can actually crawl back into the hoses, back to the machine. Uh, there is a flashback arrestor. Uh, we'll talk more about flashbacks in the uh, next video.
which uh, will cover troubleshooting and maintenance. Uh, but for right now, uh, let's go ahead and show you the proper way of shutting these torches down. Um, the, uh, you, what you want to do is you want to extinguish these torches by closing the valves. So one by one, we're just going to close the valves off. And then you shut your machine off. So you always have to follow that protocol. Okay, so in this video we covered uh, the setup of the machine and actually how to uh, start your torches up. We covered mixing your electrolyte solutions. Um, and now really the only thing that's left is for you to uh, for you start using the machine. In the next video, uh, I'm going to cover troubleshooting and um, maintenance items. So uh, please check that video out. And I hope this information has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, give us a call. The tech team's here to help.